Uh, hello everyone so today we are going to look into how we can uh, predict the customer churn uh, what does customer churn means uh, let's say for example you are running a supermarket and uh, in previous month uh, you saw that you had about 1000 customers that were visiting your supermarket uh, but the next month uh, your customers count dropped to 200 so what was the reason behind those uh, you know dropping of the customer rate so that's what basically customer churn means why are you using leaving your platform so we are going to detect whether uh, someone some user or some buyer of a supermarket or any uh, any online e-commerce or banking application why did they stop um, uh, the using their uh, their services like for example if a person with some features uh, uh, if a company wants to predict whether a customer with some features uh, left them or did not left them so basically this is what we are going to do and uh, i have this data set as you can see here uh, it's basically two. It's it's an Excel file and has two sheets. The first one is the uh, data about uh, the information about about the columns, the type of columns, and the second one uh, contains the uh, whole data. So we are going to start. Uh, so first of all, import pandas so that we can read the CSV files or the Excel files. We don't have CSV files as you can see. The ext the uh, extension of this file is dot Excel, Excel SX, which basically means Excel sheets. So we are going to read them. Uh, so I'm going to say Excel sheets is equal to PD dot. So uh, Panda has this function called Excel file, which basically takes the name of the file. What is the name of the file? E-commerce. So I'm going to type it like this. And then if I say Excel sheets dot sheet names, right? So it had two uh, two sheets, right? The data dictionary and the e-com. Uh, as you can see here, data dictionary ecom. We need the ecom. We don't need the data dictionary which contains the information about the columns. So we can say something like um, we can do this uh, by converting the Excel sheets into the uh, parsing it. You know, we we need to parse it in order to load it into the Jupyter notebook. And I'm going to say one because we need the the second uh, <coughs> second sheet. This is the zero. This is the one. <coughs> so if I run it now, you will see that. All of the columns will be loaded. Uh, all this data, as you can see here, this all the uh, it's a really huge data. So we are going to test this. So I'm going to say data. Frame. This is our data frame, right? So now if I check the head of the data frame, I can see that I have some columns, right? These are all the columns that I have, and uh, we are going to predict this turn whether a customer based on these features. Uh, left the uh, using their service or did not buy anything from them so this is what we are going to predict so we are going to predict whether a customer uh, has a churn rate of zero or one so kind of a classification you know zero one yes no all that kind of thing so we are going to use classification model for it so first of all we are going to check how many empty rows we have because for a machine learning algorithm we need to remove empty rows empty rows are not helpful for a machine learning at end uh, can cause a lot of issues so we can see that there are a lot of values that are empty so we are going to check this each one of them the first one is tenure so where is tenure this is tenure so what we can do is we uh, add it uh, it is um integer column so what we can do is assign it to the median of the uh, mean of the whole column so what i can do is i can say tenure is equal to uh, uh data frame um, no tenure dot uh, fill fill na which basically means uh, you know filling all the uh, empty columns so i'm going to do that fill na and i'm going to give it value of the tenure uh, which is our column and then i'm going to say mean mean of it i want to uh, i want the mean of the whole column and then assign it to all the empty rows that are there in the, uh, let's see if we have in place over here if we don't have yes we have so in place basically uh, changes the original data frame which is this one <clears throat> if i don't use in frame uh, in place let me show you it will give you it give me a new kind of column or data set if i use this it will change the original data set so we have successfully removed this one uh, as you can see if i run it you see tenure is now full and now we next we have warehouse to home so uh, this may be kind of a distance or something so we can also do uh, mean for it so if i can copy this we can also say uh, 
warehouse to home and then we can take the mean of it and assign it to the column so warehouse to home is also filled and then we have hours spent on app so this is also a kind of a free, uh, float value uh, hours spent on app is a float value like how many hours did the person spend on the application so next let me just run this column to be sure uh, next we have the order amount hike from last year uh, where is it where is it order amount hike so it is also a float uh, so i'm going to say uh, order hike from last year what is it okay so order amount so how much amount did that person spend more from the last year like last year he spent like 20 dollars and this year how much did he spend so that's kind of thing uh, coupon used let's see what is coupon so it is also an integer so we can also say the reason why i'm not dropping these columns because there are so many and uh, we don't have that much data and we cannot drop them so i could have dropped those rows that were empty but as i said that we don't have much data and we need them so and we need a lot of data so i'm not dropping it i'm assigning it to the mean of those columns so what is it um, order count okay order count order count and then i'm going to replace this one over here too so as you can see this is also replaced and then the last one is days in la since last order so it is pretty much clear uh, by its name uh, days since last order when was the last time that the person had ordered count those days there's kind of thing so now that is done if i check it again this column uh, to check how many uh, empty rows we have so as i can see i don't have any empty rows now so what i'm going to do next is um, let me see uh, we have this this so we have string data as you can see this is our uh, target and the features these are our features right these are our features so our features has some string data like this preferred login device then we have preferred payment method then we have the preferred order chat so a lot of string if i see the data type of them uh, I can say something like dear to data types. If you do that, you will see that uh, you you have a lot of object, which basically means these strings. So you need to convert them into some format so the machine learning can understand it. Machine learning model can understand it. And the way that we that uh, we do is we convert them into binary form into integers. So one hot encoding, which I described in one of the previous videos, if I'm not wrong. One hot encoding is basically converting the string data into zeros and ones. You can read a lot of articles on it. There are a lot of stuff available on it, but I'm just going to skip it and just, you know, uh, get to the main point. So uh, basically what happens is that you have this column, like for example, this one, marital status. So marital status would become something like marital status single. So that would say like, is the, is the marital status single true? So the answer can be either one or zero. So one for, yes and zero for false so this is kind of thing and the amount of the let me show you you know what i think if i show you that would be helpful so i'm going to use the pandas built-in uh, get dummies which basically does the work for us and then i'm going to say columns columns which column do i want uh, marital status column i want oh, you know what gender it's a really simple to understand so i want the gender column and then what i say that data let's see if we have the data I think it's something let me check the variables oh, so it's data data is equal to df so if i run it now you would see that the gender column is gone and instead of gender column we have two other columns which is gender female and gender male so a person can either be female or male so in this case this person is female in this case it is male so as you can see wherever one is that means true so we're going to drop the first one from it uh, which is uh, gender female so that is much clear for us if i say something like uh, drop list, which will drop the first column so now if we check it again it has dropped the gender uh, female so now gender male so uh, it will either be zero or one so in the last time when we uh, when both the columns were showing this person was female so this means that the gender of this person is not male so that's why showing zero so one means gender male and zero would mean gender female so this is what one hot encoding is you can check it online you will find a lot of examples and a lot of articles on it uh, but basically there's the basic idea about it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this to assign it to this uh, variable so i think 
and um, so, okay so now the if i check the new uh, data frame it will contain a new gender male column so now i'm going to do the same with the other columns like for example i have a preferred login device which is mobile phone computer or uh, what's the second one the mobile phone phone or computer so yeah i'm going to do this for the there is uh, a, a method called the rnn or cnn i don't remember its name but what uh, basically that uh, method is used to perform uh, modeling on the uh, modeling on strings so in machine learning models we need to convert it but using tensorflow or QRAS, you can uh, perform the modeling with the uh, string data as well so i'm going to run this then now well, let me just uh, Let's run this so we converted the preferred login devices and the reason why i did not drop the uh, first one in this one is because there were multiple columns so there were not just two there were like three to four columns so i cannot drop them and say you know what the, the one column doesn't even exist so next we have the uh, preferred order chat right so let me do this Logging devices and uh, prefer order chats so order category oh it's category so it can be the laptops fashion and accessories and mobiles etc uh, okay so so that I can see all of them and I'm going to run this first and uh, next we have this is also done uh, what do we have we let me just check them again I don't know why it's not showing here okay so phone we have done this one now we have the preferred payment method okay so we are going to do that a uh, preferred payment method it's a bit lengthy process because you have to check all the columns that are strings so keep your patience and if i run this now preferred payment column is also done next we have the gender which is also we have done it preferred order category we, we did it and then we have the marital status we did prefer more merit uh, let me see. our login device and order category so we are going to do both of them okay so we have marital status let's first do the marital status okay so this marital status okay so order category has been done and we need to do the preferred uh, mobile or preferred device i think we haven't done that let me see look oh it's also done so let me count them again one two three four five and let's see how many string columns do we have here so one this is two three this is four this is five yes so i think all of the data has been converted into strings let me check it there will be a lot of columns you will see it if i check the head again uh, it won't give me the all of the columns yes it will give me so as you can see all the strings have been converted into uh, integers so if i check this payment method can either be credit card this is some kind of other method which i don't remember it can be cash on delivery it can be credit card it can be debit card it can be e-wallet and can be upi marital status can be the divorced can be the married and then can be either married marital status single so this is basically converting the whole data into uh, integers or binary form zeros and ones so like kind of logic gates so now we can split the data uh, first let me just check the columns so which columns do we want uh, we want all of them except this one we don't need the customer id we won't need it we would need the churn churn so let me show you so x would be our target okay uh, sorry the x would be our features features that the person would have and the y would be our target so what is our target our target is churn sorry ch churn this is our target and our features would be all of these right so all of this that i'm going to copy because these are the features that a person would have and then you can paste them here so now if i check x x will have all the columns except the customer id and the churn and the y will have single series of uh, column which is will be zero and one right so nothing uh, special over here so now we are going to split the data into testing and training sets sk learn using sk learn sklearn has a built-in function called um, what is its name i think it's 
train test plate here so it basically splits the data into training and testing data sets so we are going to use that and uh, import it train test split okay and then i'm going to say x train train and then we have oh sorry then we have the x test then we have y train then we have y test so remember y is our target or the goal that we want to achieve and x are or the features so i'm going to call the function and then i'm going to pass the features and the target which is y and then i'm going to say test size so the size of the testing data that we want we want the 30 percent to be testing data of out of all of this like the data set that we have the data frame we want 30 percent to be contributed to the testing purposes and the training purposes would be 70 percent so like out of 100 so i'm going to say random state random state can be anything i'm going to say 101 you can place any number over here this is basically the amount of iterations that it will perform in order to uh, create that random data so if i run it you know if i check the x train um, it contains random data as you can see you it picked random data for random uh, places if i check the y test so as you can see it is also from the random indexes so this is what basically random state does it picks data from random places so now i'm going to train model on it so in order to train model on it so first i'm going to import it uh, i'm going to use um, uh, one of the linear models called logistic regression you can use anyone because the data has been converted successfully into the integer form so you are you are free to use any kind of linear regression classification you can use the uh, decision trees the data forest linear regressions your choice but the data has been converted into the uh, integer form so now you can use anything i'm going to use the logistic regression because it is really helpful uh, when we have um, when we have classification we want to achieve classification like zero ones uh, true false or uh, spam not spam yes or no these kind of things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit the model so fitting model basically means uh, training it right so we are now training it so if i check the arguments of it it takes x train and y train so we have already split the data so i'm going to pass the x train into y train right so data train so it will take some time uh, okay so maximum iterations have reached this is this happens uh, because when we have a lot of data as i mentioned that when you have a lot of data you will have this problem that with this problem will come up but this this is not like any kind of thing that says that your model is not working model has been successfully executed as you can see here but it says that there are a lot of data and the number of iterations have been reached so there is a method which where you can uh, you can use it let me search for it i don't remember its name because it's kind of uh, uh, status. you can search for it i don't remember the name name of it so we can check it but i think uh, let's see if we have any kind of result if we don't have okay so we can set the maximum iterations let me see if i have any no so you know what we can just leave it because it, it has already executed and we don't need anything you can search for it there is a, a method argument here which you can pass i don't remember its name so you can pass that and then this error won't show so now that we have done that we are now going to uh, uh, calculate all the predictions that the model has done so uh, so i can say model dot predict it is a function in the model and it takes the x test data so it is going to run on the test data uh, as if, if i show you the test data test data does not have the uh, churn right so it is going to detect the churn for it so if i check the x test as you can see the churn is not here which was zero or one so it is going to detect the churn of this data so x test and now if i check prediction it will give me zeros and ones as you can see it is an area of zeros and ones now we can evaluate the model evaluation basically means to check the accuracy of the model so i'm going to import the metrics from the uh, sklearn uh, like the confusion metrics and the uh, classification report so these are basically used to in order to check the accuracy of your model so i'm going to say classification report and then i'm going to pass two arguments it takes two arguments the true values and the predicted values so the true values that we have are by uh, test right and the predicted value were predictions these are so if i check it its accuracy is 89 percent which is pretty much good right it's it touching like 90 percent so it's good accuracy 0 0.89 so now if i check the confusion metric of it 
and fusion matrix is another evaluation method which you can use in order to test your model whether it's giving us true values false values true negatives false negatives so always remember that when you are calculating confusion matrix these values so the first diagonal the sum of this one and this one should be greater than this one and this one so the first diagonal so let me zoom in the first diagonal this one the sum of it should be greater than this one so it's a kind of a basic rule where you can check your model accuracy now when we have done that we can uh, test it and in order to test it i'm going to copy all those features these are the features i'm going to say you know what there is a sample person in our database check if he is going to churn or not so check if he is going to leave in the next month or in the upcoming month or not so i'm going to say test person right and i'm going to declare a dictionary over here and i'm going to pass all those arguments so i'm going to <clears throat> pass all of them so for tenure let's see what was tenure so let's let me copy a random uh, value from here so i'm going to copy random tenure can be either okay so you know what random tenure can be an integer so like one two three four so i'm going to say tenure was uh, three or uh, yes three so ct tire was let's say three uh, we are house to home let's say 40 is the distance of that person from the uh, from the uh, home to that place and then we next we have hours spent on the app so let's say a person spends about two hours per day on that app then we have the number of device registered the person has registered a laptop and mobile satisfaction score he has a satisfaction score of 3.0 out of 5 number of addresses the person has only one address complaints uh, no he did not complain about anything uh, order amount hike let's see what it's uh, we can get any kind of a value over here uh, order hike where is it where is it order hike mm. yeah this so it's it's also an integer so order hike i can say 15 percent he is he has uh, you know kind of the more orders than the last he has used two coupons you know, the order count he has done about 15 orders days since last order uh, let's say 30 days cash back amount let's say uh, zero is the person gender male yes uh, preferred login device computer so here is what i'm going to do so these are three different devices names right these three so the person uh, was using so either one of these uh, you can uh, declare one to it you cannot declare all of these like like this you cannot uh, make them true all of them <clears throat> we have to make true one of them so i'm going to say you know what the person was using uh, phone so and then in the categories we can also specify categories uh, only one category uh, where is it preferred order category preferred order category mobile phone Mobile, others so i'm going to say the person mainly shopping for the uh, groceries and the rest of them are zero so this is what uh, we were doing when we were performing the one hot encoding you know converting to uh, string so this is basically one single column which is category and that category is grocery this is also one single column and that category is device phone so uh, okay so this is the payment methods that we have uh, payment method this and then we have this payment method this is also payment method okay so this is also one single column which is the uh, payment method so let's say the person is uh, cash on delivery right so i'm going to say all of them as zeros zero 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 all of them are false except one which is cash on delivery so the person is doing cash on delivery what is the marital status of that person he is married so let's say one and then zero and then zero so if i check the test person now as you can see it has this column but we cannot pass this into machine learning model uh, because uh, it it it, uh, it needs a data frame so the way we are going to do is we are going to convert this test data test person into a uh, to a data frame just like this so now if i check the test person with 
test dear test data frame if i check it so it contains a lot of columns which which are the features of that person it does not have churn as you can see it does not have any churn so we are going to predict so i'm going to say model dot predict the churn rate of this person which is test df this is a single person we want to know if he is going to leave us or not so let's see what the model gives us it gives us zero said no the person is not going to leave uh, so there are a lot of uh, things that you can try like you can change this you can say you know what the distance is 400 kilometers hour spent is just one hour uh, you know i'm just making things worse for it so that it can uh, you know give a true answer so number of addresses is three complaints is let's say he complained 20 times uh, order hike from last year is zero percent he did not order this year coupons use zero uh, orders count is also let, let's say two uh, days since last order let's say 60 or 50 uh, gender is made so let's keep all the other things same now if i check the model as you can see it has changed because we provided a lot of negative things over here like you know warehouse we have increased the distance we have a uh, number of devices we decreased it we have increased this one satisfaction core has also been reduced and we have also so as you can see you can change these things and based of them you will get a single value if you want the, this one which is one if you want just the answer you can say zero and then it will give you one or zero right so this is basically customer churn prediction system where you can predict whether a customer is going to leave you or not based on the features uh, you can uh, find a lot of data sets i have used this data set i will provide this link and i will provide the uh, code in the description if you have any questions uh, please free please uh, please let me know sorry for my bad english uh, but you know we i'm just uh, not that much good at english so if you have any questions uh, please let me know i will provide the details in the description okay thanks bye peace